Hi, I'm Peter. And I'm Ryan. And this is our presentation on music streaming and production. So for uh, our project today, we'll be talking about the popularity of music streaming services such as Spotify and talk about the ways it's changed in which music is made as well as listened to. So a brief history of music streaming. Uh, those services such as Napster and the iTunes Store predated them. It was Pandora Internet Radio and Spotify that ushered in the modern era of music streaming services. Where customers of the iTunes Store paid a la carte for individual songs and albums, Pandora and Spotify allowed users to listen to virtually unlimited library of music. Users could listen to music for free, but with ads or without ads at a monthly premium. premium. Napster, which was originally founded in 1999, was uh, the great-grandfather of modern music streaming. Napster was widely used by people all over the world who would rip MP3 files from CDs and upload them to the site. Though the quality of these rips was not of great quality, the fact that people could download free music from a vast and ever-expanding library made the site incredibly popular. Napster was shut down in 2001 after a court battle with the RIAA, which was the Recording Industry Association of America. The lawsuit was, as you might have expected, over the illegal distribution of copyrighted music. Uh, the iTunes Store came around in 2003, uh, two years after the release of the first iPod. Apple released the iTunes Store with the intent of providing users with access to songs for as little as 99 cents. The site became widely popular among iPod users and CD burners alike because of the infinite number of copies the downloads could be made into. These downloads were very useful and could be used in Apple products like iMovie and iPhoto. Pandora, which was founded in 2005, was introduced in the fall. The idea was that users would be able to create unique, radi unique radio stations comprised of music curated for them based on their music taste. The user would select an artist, song, or genre, and the website would produce a, sta <clears throat> Sorry. produce a station of similar tracks. The station would then be further refined based on what tracks the user liked or disliked. Pandora was originally free with ads, or could be made available without ads at a premium price. Spotify launched in the fall of 2008, initially as what was known as a freemium service, which basically means users get free features in exchange for watching the occasional ad. Eventually, users were given the option to pay for a subscription and get rid of ads while adding some other exclusive features. The site has over 30 million songs and can be organized into playlists and shared within the app or on other media sites. In the past years, the majority of musician revenue has came from the sales of records, cassettes, CDs, and finally digital sales through iTunes and similar services. Touring was more of a means of advertising for these albums than a profitable venture itself. With music streaming services becoming the norm, the business model was turned on to its head. <clears throat> Making money producing music has become a far more complicated venture. Either people don't pay for music at all using Spotify, SoundCloud, or Apple Music without ads, or with ads rather, or looking to music on YouTube, or they pay a monthly subscription fee of 5 to $10. Either way, producers and artists aren't getting significant direct revenue from the music itself. Instead of making money from the sales of the albums and using touring as a means of promotion, now musicians rely on touring for revenue. While this may be an easy enough transition for establishing for established musicians, this poses a big obstacle for up-and-coming artists. It's a catch-22 scenario. You have to tour in order to support your music, but you need to be popular. You need to make popular music in order to tour. Spotify is changing the way music is made. Musicians receive music from their receive money from their songs, not based on how many minutes somebody spends listening to those songs, but how many times somebody spends how many times somebody listens to those songs. As such, artists are incentivized to make shorter, catchy songs that encourage repeat listens as opposed to longer, less earwormy tracks. 
have this been the standard in, say, the 70s, that would mean a lot more Septembers and a lot fewer Stairways to Heaven, Stairway to Heavens. The fact that artists can also release single tracks at any time via streaming services has also reduced the importance of the album. So what does this mean for the listeners? There are many choices for which streaming service listeners have to choose, but there are only a few formats that these services work in. Services like Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal will allow users to listen to any song whenever they want with a $5 to $10 subscription. In comparison, there are services like Pandora and Slacker Radio that offer computer-generated playlists like a radio station. On these sites, subscriptions will remove ads and allow listeners to skip more songs. Pandora was an extremely popular service when it was first coming to fruition, but most users were taking advantage of free accounts. More recently, online radios have lost a lot of popularity because of newer services coming out with the same radio feature, plus much more in the way of on-demand music. Services like Spotify and Apple Music can be considered more complete than its counterparts, the online radios, largely in part because of the newer streaming services also having their own radios built into the services.